And we're now delighted to welcome back to the stage um, someone who's been as the previous one in Wills, Gary White, who along with Matt Damon is the co-founder of Water.org, an organization, a non-profit organization that I know you all know, that's dedicated to empowering people in the developing world to gain access to safe water and sanitation. His entrepreneurial vision has driven innovations in the way water and sanitation projects are delivered and financed, and these innovations now serve as a model in the sector. Please give a warm One Young World welcome to returning councillor Gary White. So, good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here with you this morning and to share some of our experience with water.org uh, with all of you and how we are tackling the global water and sanitation crisis. Not just uh, from my perspective, but from the perspective of two of my colleagues, uh, one working in Indonesia and one in Peru. Now, the, the global water crisis is massive. It affects 2.4 billion people in terms of sanitation, 663 million in terms of water. It's an incredible toll, as we all know, in terms of health and how it can stunt the lives of children and how it holds back economic development. And a lot of these issues are related to health, but what's often not understood about this crisis is how much it's financially related. Now, when I've traveled the world in you know, my 30 years or so of doing this work, uh, I've met lots of people. And what struck me in Honduras many years ago is one family that was paying 25% of their income just to buy water from water vendors because they couldn't afford to pay to connect to the public utility. Imagine that, a quarter of your income just for water. I met another woman in India elderly woman who took out a loan from a loan shark for 125% interest so she could build a toilet for herself so she wouldn't have to go out to the train tracks at night to defecate. So there's this huge toll in terms of health, you know, young girls walking to collect water and they can't go to school, in terms of dignity of people who lack access to a toilet. So what I want to talk about today is one aspect of what we're doing at water.org, and it's called water credit. So water credit is really about helping people living in poverty that lack these basic services get a small loan. Sometimes it's only about $150, $200, so that they can use that money to get that water connection and be on the journey to a new life. So they can use that loan to build the toilet that best suits their needs and that they want so that they have the dignity of not having to send their daughter out late at night to, to defecate. They can then repay that loan because it's very affordable. And then that money can be used for the next person who needs access to water and sanitation. And it's a recognition that we need to see the intrinsic power of the poor, not as just recipients of charity, but giving them a leg up in terms of access to finance so that they can exercise their power as customers and as citizens. That's what this is all about trying to tap into that power. So these financial tools for other things have been known for a long time. Microfinance has been around for quite a while. But what we've tried to do is nudge the microfinance sector closer to water and sanitation to make loans in this area because they have not traditionally done that. And we've met with pretty good success with this so far. 93% of the borrowers are women, which makes a lot of sense. The women are the ones that are charged with collecting water oftentimes. Uh, they're the ones that are charged with family health. 
So it's been very, very positive to see how many of these loans are being taken out by women. We've now reached more than four million people with access to water and sanitation. In fact, it's more than this now. I just learned this week we're up over 4.5 million people who've gotten access to water or sanitation, not because of charity, but because of access to finance for water and sanitation. And some of the key metrics now, as I mentioned, over four and a half million. I also learned that we've now surpassed one million loans that have been made to, to uh, women for this. And they have almost 4.5 people per household per loan. So we're up to about 4.5 million people through a million loans who have done this. One statistic that's not up here is that 62% of the borrowers actually live on less than $2 a day. So there's a potential to reach pretty far down the economic pyramid in terms of getting access to water and sanitation. Now we've used the $14.8 million in the philanthropic subsidies. We raise funds from foundations like PepsiCo, uh, Stella Artois, uh, IKEA, and others for that philanthropic capital to then help these microfinance institutions launch this new business of lending to the poor for water and sanitation, to do the market research, to hire the right staff. We still need that philanthropic capital, but that's unleashed more than $176 million in private capital that allows these loan portfolios to scale to millions of women. Now that's $176 million in charity that we didn't have to raise because the market forces are starting to take over with this. And so, as I mentioned, we're now over a million water credit loans, 99% repayment rate on the loans. So this has been a really good investment uh, from a lot of different levels. And as I said, the loan sizes aren't that big, but that $187 loan can completely change the life of a family. It can put them on a more stable economic footing. It can allow the girls to be in school. It can allow them to have better health. So this is what we're doing at water.org to come up with new ways of thinking, unexpected ways and in innovating for these solutions. Now I want to bring on two of our staff that are on the front lines of water credit. Uh, and I want to give them uh, a great welcome and let you know a little bit about each of them. Yanina Rumichi is a water credit analyst in Peru. Yanina monitors Water.org's water credit programs there. Prior to joining Water.org, Yanina worked with the Central Reserve Bank of Peru as a statistician and a financial analyst. Now, in her free time, she volunteers with a group that provides training in technology and software to women who are small business owners and also for the Junior Achievement Program. She did a BA in economics from San Ignacio de Loyola University. So, come on on stage, Janina. Ah, let me take a seat. And also, I want to welcome Shoshana Avianata. She's a water credit officer in Indonesia. At water.org, she supports our water credit program to improve the capabilities of community-based organizations and their potential as rural water providers to improve access to water and sanitation for those communities. The water area has been her interest since college because water and sanitation is basic for life, but still many people lack access. With her background in environmental engineering, she conducts research about community-based solutions in Banding, uh, West Java. She was uh, also involved in many community service programs when she was in university. She has a bachelor's degree in environmental engineering from Banding, Bandung University of Technology in West Java in Indonesia. And I'm also happy to welcome today, uh, doing some translating for us, is Jennifer Linares. Well, welcome. <laughs> so, uh, Janina, I wanted to start with you. Uh, how does Water.org partner with financial institutions to help a large number of families in Peru 
gain access to improved water and sanitation. Tell us more about that. Okay. En Perú, las microfinancieras the microfinance institutions um, asesores, work with representatives that con, have valuable relationships con los clientes, with clients la and with general. the community in general. Water.org decided to work with us and develop a product of water and sanitation so that low-income families of our countries have access to, to a bathroom, to a water tank, and other resources. In particular, I believe that we all benefit because microfinance institutions has a 40% of new credits from this program. Water.org also benefits because it has global um, goals to improve water and sanitation. And above all, families of my country benefit because we, they have a better quality of life and can be more productive and can do much better. Wow, that's, that's very impressive. And uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about Water.org's work with water credit. Uh, specifically in Peru, and uh, some more details on that. In Peru, we work with three microfinance institutions. We started with three pilot programs, one in Piura, in the northern region of my country, another in Huancayo, in the central region, and another one in the city of Lima. We have done a pilot program of one year, and since June of this year, we have scaling up to all agencies of micro microfinance institutions because they believe that the, prog the program is successful and has high demand. Mm. And so what are some of the results to date in Peru with water credit? Some, some numbers if you have them, uh, and in terms of uh, the future plans. We are very excited because we have benefited in only a year more than 40,000 families in my country. We hope that the goal is widely achieved because we will work for several years more. And we are looking to associate with other federations that represent other microfinance institutions because currently we have the experience. And the next steps will be to take the experience of, of Peru to the rest of the region in Latin America. Hmm. Oh, that's great. It's, it's, it's very impressive what's been happening in Peru because I know before we had uh, this effort there, I actually traveled to Peru and did some initial research and scouting and we were a little bit uncertain whether it would work uh, in Peru. And we did a lot of due diligence and research and, and started with pilots, I know. So it's really, it's, it's great to see this program, which really originated more in, in Asia, being transferred into Peru, and then getting over that pilot stage where you're scaling up and 40,000 people uh, are, are in line to get this uh, improvement. And I think that's just the beginning. So thanks for your work there and the, the whole team. It's been pretty, pretty dramatic to watch. Uh, Shoshana. Oh, yeah. So how has this been applied in Indonesia? Every part of the world is a little bit different. Uh, and there's different ways of working with communities and, and households. So how has the program of water credit been applied in Indonesia? Uh, yeah, like Gary ever mentioned before, like there will never going enough charity to solve a global water crisis and sanitation in the world. So we need to innovate. We need to find some creative solution bef to solve the global water crisis. And water.org with its flagship program through water credit is filling the gap between the Indonesian government provided and the needs of safe water and sanitation in the community. Because poverty is not always a problem. Like, for example, in Indonesia, they were able to buy a motorbike, but they don't have a proper toilet. So they're still practicing open defecation, like in a river, or in a trench, or in a bush. And it is more about uh, priority, about the awareness, about the affordability of the community. So with the water credit program in Indonesia, we are able to reach more people at the bottom of the pyramid and bring awareness and affordability to safe water and sanitation to the community. 
Great, great. And I think that's a big part of what we're looking at is, is not only uh, designing these solutions, but how do they get marketed? How does the word get out to, to borrowers about the, the ability to take out a loan? Because this is very new to a lot of the clients that they could actually take a loan for a toilet. Yeah. Usually they, they recognize, yeah, I can, I can get a loan for a sewing machine yes. and sew clothes. I can get a loan for a cow, but when they go and meet with their microfinance institutions, they now understand I can also get a water loan or a toilet yes. loan. So, and I know it's been a little bit different in Indonesia because of the role with community-based organizations mm -hmm. playing a role. So how do these CBOs uh, and our water credit program with them in Indonesia, you know, complement uh, the traditional water credit program to reach more people? So the government of Indonesia had implemented the community-based organization or CBO program who manage the water utility and village level. But usually, the program only cover like a small part in the village, and the rest of the development will be given to the community to be operate to develop and expand their, their area. And the uh, CBOs itself act as the water service provider in a village level, who, uh, which they had not has access to the municipal waterworks. And the project itself will seek to complement the government of Indonesia investment in rural water sector by moving the government of Indonesia fund CBO towards sustainability and facilitating access to commercial financing to microfinancial institution so that the CBO program uh, gives the opportunity to the CBO which active in rural areas as a water service provider to develop and expand the water system development through microfinancial institution, and in the end, will complement the flagship water credit program of water.org to reach more people to have access to safe water and sanitation. Mm, great, that's, that's amazing, well done. Uh, and, and we have just a few minutes left. I think that what an observation I have is, is one, uh, you know, I'm the CEO and co-founder of water.org, and it's very actually positive for me to see how much the knowledge here outstrips my own knowledge <laughs> of what's happening on the ground. And so, so really, uh, congratulations to you and, and, your, and your role in really coming up to speed. And I think it also speaks to the power of these solutions from the bottom up. Uh, you know, this whole community-based organization approach wasn't something that you know we dreamed up at the international level, but it was something that kind of grew organically out of the experience there. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, that's a that's a key takeaway. And what Water.org we're always trying to do is to facilitate uh, this process from the the country level up and use those learnings across the organization. So the convenings that we're able to bring you into to share the lessons with what's happening in Indonesia, into India, and into the Philippines, and so on. That's very positive. The other thing, just wrapping up, I just wanted to make an observation uh, about the potential that, that all of you have in the context of these big social issues uh, that, that are facing us. And you know, the, the world is replete with challenges, for sure. And there's such an entrepreneurial spirit among uh, all of you in this room and wanting to go out and tackle these issues. And there's oftentimes that need to kind of jump in. And, and I know it was myself, you know, back in 1990, I saw a problem and I jumped in and I created an NGO and, and we're off and running. But I think what's happening also in the world now to kind of keep your, your eye on is that there are a lot of entrepreneurial, social entrepreneurial organizations out there that have created some pretty innovative models that you can, you can jump onto and, and piggyback onto those organizations and have really big social impact and really innovate in the context of what other NGOs are doing, like you guys have been able to do with water.org, jump into an innovative entrepreneurial organization and take it forward. Now, there's still going to be needs where there's unique insights that some of you might have where issues really aren't being addressed and it's appropriate and you need to jump in and just start, whether that's a new NGO or some kind of startup that you can do. But to me, 
what has changed in the last decade with social entrepreneurship and things that have happened with the Skoll Foundation really defining this space and the Schwab Foundation and others is really creating whole new career paths for young individuals to jump into things that are already up and running and drive them forward even farther. And to me, that's something that, you know, an, an opportunity I didn't have back uh, when we started uh, water.org because there was no such thing as social entrepreneurship. So I really see you guys as, as two really great examples of social entrepreneurs who are pushing us forward uh, in water credit and who knows what's over the horizon that you'll be helping us with. So thank you. Thank you. I think we're done.